Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try and get a physical sense, a physical meaning of what's actually happening here. We're trying to calculate the moment of a force about a given arbitrary axis from O to L. And in the previous video, we saw that the moment about the line from O to L is equal to the unit vector along that axis and multiplied via a dot product or a scalar product with R cross F. Now remember that R cross F, so R is the, the position vector from the origin to the point at which the force acts, and F is the force acting at that particular position. So this quantity right here, let me write it over here, so M O S L is equal to the unit vector dotted or vector multiplied times R cross F, which means that this is equal to the moment vector about the origin. So this will give you the moment about the origin if you multiply that times the unit vector along the direction of the line of interest, the axis of interest, you will get the moment about the line OL. But how does that physically play out? How do we get the understanding of what that really is? Well, to help out on that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our position vector that goes from the origin to the point where the force acts and divide it into two vectors, one vector that runs from the origin to a point that is on a plane that runs perpendicular to L. So imagine L sticking out and a plane that is perpendicular to L like there. And so we draw a line, a position vector from the origin to where the vector or to where L crosses through that plane. And then we draw a second vector along the plane from the point where L pokes through the plane to where the force acts. So those are our two position vectors, R1 and R2. Similarly, we're going to take the force vector right here. Here's the force vector and divide into two components. One component which is perpendicular to the plane, therefore parallel to L, and that's why I have the little parallel symbol there. And the second component which is parallel to the plane here and therefore perpendicular to F, parallel to L or perpendicular to L right there. So you can imagine that if you have the axis L here and you have the perpendicular component of force that lies along this plane, that you can see that that force would cause a torque going around the axis. So this is the component of the force that causes a torque or a moment around the axis. Since this one is parallel to the axis, it will not cause a moment. Now to further illustrate that, we're going to then express R in terms of the sum of R1 plus R2, F in terms of the sum of F parallel and F perpendicular, work that out and now look at each of the four terms that will then come out of that to see what it physically means. So this can now be written as M sub zero L. So this is the moment about the line from the origin to L, this line right here, this axis, which is equal to the unit vector dotted or multiply what we call scalar multiplied by the following. So we have R1 times F parallel, so R1 cross product with F parallel, plus, so we'll end up with four terms, R1 multiplied times F perpendicular, so this would be R1 multiplied times F perpendicular, plus, now we have R2 multiplied times F parallel, so we have R2 multiplied times F parallel, and now we have plus R2 multiplied times F perpendicular. All right, like that. And let me put a bracket around that. So when we multiply this out, we get these four terms. And then of course we have to multiply that times the unit vector along the axis OL. So this then becomes MOL is equal to the unit vector dotted with this. So this would be R cross R1 cross F parallel plus the unit vector dotted with R1 cross F perpendicular plus the unit vector dotted with or scalar multiplied with R2 cross F like this and then finally plus the unit vector multiplied times R2 crossed with F perpendicular. And I don't need a bracket. All right, there we go. Now we're going to interpret each one of those terms. First of all, let's talk about R1 cross F parallel. So here we have R1, which runs parallel to OL, and here we have the component of the force, which runs parallel with OL. So we have two vectors. 
that are parallel to each other, and we have a cross product. Remember, the magnitude of a cross product is the magnitude of R1 times the magnitude of the second vector, F parallel, times the sine of the angle between them. But if the angle is zero, the angle of zero is the, the sine of zero, zero, so therefore this component cancels out and becomes zero. It's non-contributory. If we look at this component right here, so we have R1 cross with F perpendicular. So we have R1 in this direction, and F perpendicular, which is perpendicular to the plane through which this line runs. So these two vectors are indeed perpendicular. The angle is 90 degrees. However, if you do a cross multiplication between the R1 vector and F perpendicular, this is the F right here parallel to the plane that runs through OL, and use your right hand rule, you go R1 times F perpendicular and your thumb points to the, to the left so you have a component going in this direction so now you're going to do a dot product of lambda dot this quantity right here now notice lambda is in the direction of OL we have a vector that is in this direction and so when you do a dot product or a scalar product you multiply the magnitude of this times the magnitude of that times the cosine of the angle between them and since they're 90 degrees to one another, this lambda is at 9 degrees with the product of these two, then the cosine of 9 degrees is 0, so this whole thing becomes 0 as well. In the same way, the third term, I think, will have the same fate. Let's take a look at that. So here we have R2, and we have F parallel to 0L. So they're perpendicular to each other. So you can take a look like this. They're perpendicular to, the, to each other like that. So when we do a cross product, you have lambda, oh, not, not lambda, you have R2 cross multiplied with F parallel, and your thumb stick out this way. That means you have a vector going this way. So you have R2 and F parallel to L, which pokes perpendicular to the plane right here. So you have a vector going along the plane, and so now you have the unit vector like this and you have which is perpendicular to the plane and you have a vector along the plane that means those two vectors are perpendicular as well 90 degree angles so when you do a dot product or a scalar product between the unit vector and this since they're 90 degrees apart from one another and the product of a dot product or the product of a scalar product is the magnitude of this times the magnitude of that times the cosine of the angle between them if it's 90 degrees the cosine of 90 degrees is zero so therefore this goes to zero as well. Finally, the only term that's left should be this term right here. And let's take a look at that term, see what that ends up being. So we have the product between R2 and F perpendicular. So R2 is like this, and F perpendicular is like this. So notice that they both lie in the plane that cuts through the line OL. So when you do a cross product, you move your fingers in the direction of R2, curl your fingers in the direction of F perpendicular, and your thumb sticks perpendicular out, which means the cross product of those two, R2 and F perpendicular, is perpendicular out of the plane. And then if you do a dot product with the unit vector that lies in the same direction, you can then see that the, dot pro the cross product of this and the unit vector along the line OL are parallel to each other, and when you do a dot product or a scalar product between two vectors that are par parallel to each other, the angle between them is zero, and it will be the magnitude of this times the magnitude of the cross product times the cosine of the angle between them, which is zero degrees, and the cosine of zero is equal to one. That means the moment about OL will be equal to the magnitude of the unit vector, which is one, times the magnitude of this product right here. So basically, the moment about some arbitrary axis from O to L is going to be equal to the magnitude of the vector along the plane that cuts through that axis, the magnitude of the vector, in this case R2, and the magnitude of the vector, the, the component of the force vector that lies along that plane that cuts perpendicular to the line OL. So the magnitude of this vector times the magnitude of the perpendicular vector, and since they're at 90 degrees towards one another, it's simply the magnitude of this times the magnitude of that times, of course, the magnitude of the, the uh, unit vector, which is always equal to one. So basically, MOL, MOL is gonna be equal to the magnitude of R2 
times the magnitude of the component of the vector, the force vector, which is perpendicular to the plane that cuts through OL. And that then is the definition of the moment about any arbitrary vector. And that's what that means.